like California Congressman Ro Khanna, who joins me now. Congressman, it's good to have you with us. Now, so we have a new presumptive uh, Democrat nominee, and we know that uh, she and Trump will be uh, going all over the country um, uh, to campaign, both of them, obviously. Um, and we also know that the Secret Service has a staffing shortage, we've learned. So how can we be sure at this point that either Harris or RFK Jr. or former President Trump will be protected? Well, I'm very concerned. First, first of all, I'm glad that the director resigned. She gave some of the most appalling testimony I've seen in my eight years uh, in Congress. And the people who were on that site need to be fired. I mean, I don't understand how you can have a major assassination attempt on a former president and not have some heads roll. But if the Secret Service has a shortage, they have a $3 billion allocation. They should come to Congress and we should allocate another billion dollars. Look, we're putting almost a trillion dollars on our defense budget. You and I have talked about that. Uh, and we can't put more money to keep our uh, leaders safe. And then we need someone really competent uh, in that role. And I don't think it should just be some acting person that they have right now. Uh, back to the point of accountability, Congressman. Whether it's what happened in Afghanistan or any failure, I think in any administration, that is obvious and serious. I think the American people are getting really tired of, you know, regular working people. They have accountability in the, in the workforce. But in this case, you know, where was the President Biden? Why didn't he fire her? Why didn't Vice President Kamala Harris uh, step up and say, look, you know, President has COVID, but my view is that this has got to happen. Uh, that's shocking to me. Forget the election. That fact is shocking to me. I do think she should have been asked to resign or, or fired. It took a congressional hearing to get to that point. I think when I asked her a question about, do you realize that the Secret Service had, after President Reagan was uh, shot, that he retired afterwards and was asked to, to, to leave, she was surprised. I think she thought I, the Democrats were going to ask her softballs, uh, but it was a rude awakening that this country was outraged. And it was it, a mistake that the, she should have been asked uh, to, to, to leave the day after or two days after this happened uh, and have a date for her departure. And and the people at that site need to be held accountable. I don't understand how some of them aren't accountable. Look, it's not that they're bad people, but if you have an assassination <laughs> attempt that could have torn this country apart, heads have to roll. Yeah, well, again, Joe Biden should have, just, should have been 24 hours. She should have been out. Uh, but, Congressman, I want to turn to um, uh, Joe Biden now. He's going to address the nation tomorrow night. Um, the, the, the argument primarily against Trump, well, one of the arguments, is that he is an, an enemy of democracy, pretty strong statement. But clearly Joe Biden was forced out of this race. He did not want to go. It was clear he didn't want to go. All the reporting indicates he didn't want to go. So how, how did the Democrats make this we're the party of democracy claim when, like, four people seemed to have outsized influence and in who the nominee was going to be? Well, look, I stuck with President Biden until uh, Sunday. I was saying that he earned 14 million votes. He should uh, be the nominee. I still believe that he could have won the race. I mean, you know, polling goes up and down. And I didn't like the fact that you had uh, donors and pundits uh, trying to figure out uh, after the fact who, who the nominee was, was going, to, uh, going to be. But we did have a process, and uh, Vice President Harris won the delegates. It's not like someone else can't run, and uh, she's strong. And I do think she's going to make a, a, a strong race, and it would be a mistake uh, uh, for anyone to underestimate her. But you don't, don't you think, that, you know, again, 15 million people, you made, you made the case right there, Congressman, and we really appreciate you coming on, because um, you and I actually agree on a number of things, which, you know, I think Republicans and Democrats could actually work on together. But again, like, if it's that the polls were bad at that moment in time for Biden, and they were, they were bad before the debate, what if the polls aren't great for Kamala Harris over the next three weeks? Are they going to, is George Clooney going to write another op-ed? And then we're going to have another visit, a late night visit by, you know, the, the crew, whoever that was, you know, Ron Klain or Donald or whoever came, Ricky <laughs> Ricchetti. And then, then, then she's going to go and, I don't know, maybe they'll nominate you, Congressman. I mean, I'd, you know, I could see, I could see no. some Republicans perhaps uh, giving you a second look. <laughs> I mean, but when does this I, I, end? I certainly... I, I'm not on the list, especially after probably coming on, on Fox News. But the, 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 the point is that one of the things I admire about Joe Biden is his resilience. He has a toughness. He has, uh, you don't just shirk if you have bad poll numbers. And I think that 
this is what uh, frustrated me with that whole process, that, oh, your polls have gone down, so suddenly we're going to start talking about uh, a, a replacement. And uh, I don't think he should have been embarrassed publicly. I have said this uh, uh, many times, and I, I didn't like how it went down, but now the party is unified around uh, Vice President Harris, and I hope she focuses on the issues. You know what I hope we have a debate in this country? There was globalization, it deindustrialized a lot of America uh, in their legitimate concerns, and why don't we have a vision about who actually is going to bring the new factories and who has the right policies and stop the name calling and stop calling each other the enemy of the American yeah. people, but actually address the issues. Well, Congressman, um, love having you on. Thank you very much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.